Greetings Risk 5 friends. Today I thought that I would try something a little different. Uh, with the ALU having been designed and sent off to China to get the PCB manufactured, and now I'm just waiting for it to come back, I thought that I would start on the shifter. So if you'll recall, the ALU was able to implement various uh, arithmetic and logic operations, but was not able to implement a shift. And we have three basic shift instructions. We have a shift left. Um, we have a, that's actually SLL. We have a shift logical left, logical left. We have a shift right logical, I guess this is left logical, left logical. We have a shift right logical, and we have a shift right arithmetic, right arithmetic. And the difference between uh, left logical and right logical, of course, is the direction. And when you shift logical, you shift zeros into uh, the position that's, that's shifting over. So for example, um, for left logical, if I had uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and I wanted to shift it 1 left, then this would become 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, because I'm shifting a 0 in. Same thing with right logical. Uh, if I had a 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and I wanted to shift that one position right logical, I would be shifting a 0 into the upper position. I would end up with 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And the last bit just sort of falls off the end. Um, this also falls off the end, and it doesn't actually get stored anywhere. In many architectures, that bit gets stored in, you know, sometimes the carry bit, um, but the RISC-V has no carry flag, so that bit actually doesn't go anywhere. It just disappears. Now, with right arithmetic, the idea is that shifting one right is the same as dividing by two arithmetically. So, of course, if you were to take negative one, uh, well, if you were to take negative two and divide that by two, you would want to end up with negative one. And the only way to do that, uh, this is negative two, in two's complement notation in five bits. So the only way to get this to become negative one when you shift is to shift a one into the upper position so that you end up with that, which is negative one. Otherwise, if you just do it logically, you would end up with this, which of course is not anything, it's just 15. So the idea is that in arithmetic shifting, you take the most significant bit and you shift that into itself. So that's why this becomes a one because we're shifting a one as the most significant bit. And if we had this and we were to shift that arithmetically, well, we take the most significant bit and shift it into itself. So that would be zero, zero, one, one, one. So that's the difference. Now, in terms of instructions, um, shift left logical has its own um, funk three uh, pattern. Shift right logical and shift right arithmetic share a funk three. And the only difference between the two is that bit 30 on the shift right arithmetic is set to one. So how do we implement a shifter? Now, um, again, uh, what I should say here is that when you shift, you can shift any number of positions between 0 and 31. In other words, you shift by a 5-bit amount. And for the register register instructions, so for example, shift left logical, you know, let's suppose it would be, uh, you know, register 5 by register 6. Well, register 6, of course, is 32 bits, but we're only going to pay attention to the lower 5 bits. Uh, same thing with shift left logical uh, immediate. So, you know, for example, if I had, you know, I don't know, hex um, 3f, uh, which is six bits, we would only be paying attention to the lower five bits. So that would be 1f, which is 31. So I would be shifting this left 
31 positions. Okay, uh, so because we want to be able to shift in essentially one instruction cycle, uh, we don't want to shift by one repeatedly uh, because that would take more cycles. So we want to do this a little more efficiently. Now, there are things called barrel shifters and funnel shifters, and they basically require huge masses of uh, gates in order to accomplish shifting left or right or arithmetic uh, by any amount. Instead, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the logarithmic shifter, and here's how the logarithmic shifter works. So if we want to shift left logical some value x, by some value y, what you do is you take y and you decompose it into its binary um, number. You know, let's suppose this is b4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So this is just the binary representation of y. And this represents a shift by 1, this represents a shift by 2, and so on. Where, where each b sub i represents a shift by 2 to the i. Now, you can do this in basically any order that you want, and you can do them one after another. So in other words, if I had some circuitry here that shifts by 1, and then I have some circuitry here that shifts by 2, and by 4, and by 8, and by 16. In other words, this is 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, to the 3, to the 4. And I feed them in a chain like this, and I enable or disable these based on the binary number. So this would be if b0 is set, if b1 is set, and so on. Then at the end of this, I will get a shift by any arbitrary amount between 0 and 31. If I'm going to shift by 0, then none of these are activated, and they're just going to flow through. Now really what I need here is kind of a multiplexer, right? Because this is going to be a shift by 0, and this is going to be a shift by 0, and so on. And I'm just going to sort of multiplex between these two, depending on whether we're activated or not. So we're going to multiplex and then feed, multiplex and then feed. This is a terrible drawing. Multiplex and then feed, and then multiplex and that's the output. And the input goes to both of these shifters. Now, of course, a shift by 0 is just, you know, a wire. And a shift by 1, well, you know, it's fixed. It's a fixed shift by 1. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, you know, wires like this. And then these wires are like this, and these wires are like this, and so on. So there's 32 bits in, 32 bits out. Now, the way that I'm going to accomplish this is not through multiplexers and, quote, shifters, but through tri-state buffers. So the idea is that we have our 32 bits coming in, and now we need to either shift by 1 or shift by 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tri-state buffer and another tri-state buffer, and what I'm going to do is connect the inputs, and connect the outputs. And only one of these is going to be active at a time. And what this buffer is going to do is, so for example, if I were to shift left, then here I'll just draw the lowest uh, four of these. So this is a buffer of four bits. So we have, um, so we have input, uh, I'll just call it input bit 0, input bit 1, input bit 2, and input bit 3. So now I'm basically decomposing this 32-bit bus into this. 
Now, in order to shift left, really what I want in the output is I'm going to be shifting a zero in. So I want this to be zero. I want this to be in zero. I want this to be in one. And I want this to be in two. Well, I'll do that by simply rerouting the inputs. So this will be grounded. This will be in zero, in one, and in two. So that's what this thing is. Now, if we take a look at the shift by zero, and I have all four buffers. Well, in that case, I want this bit to be in zero and in one, in two, and in three. So now I can get rid of this. And now I'm just going to join these up. This is my very, very messy schematic. OK, so these are enabled if we're not shifting, and these are enabled if we are shifting by 1. So if we are shifting by 1, in 0 is going to appear over here in bit 1 position. If we're not shifting, then in 0 is going to appear over here in bit 0 position. And that's basically the way it works. Uh, shift right works exactly the same way. If it's logical shift, then of course we're just going to be shifting a zero at the top. And if it's shift left arithmetic, well, we're just going to take whatever the most significant bit is and shift that in. So in other words, it's going to look like this at the very top. So we have here our input. So this would be in 31 in 30, and in 29. So I'm simply going to connect this to this, and to this, and do this. So that way, shifting arithmetically uh, right, uh, the most significant bit, which is the sine bit, appears in this position and in this position in 30 appears in the 29th position, in 29 appears in the 28th position, and so on. So basically that's shift by 1, and then I just need to shift by 2, shift by 4, by 8, by 16, and then I'm done. So uh, that's the plan. So what I'm going to do now, and this is, you know, maybe it's just going to be very boring, or I don't know what, um, I'm just going to go into KiCad and build this from scratch. So, uh, you know, you could just leave it running in the background. I don't know. I, I kind of like to see these build videos just running in the background while I'm doing other work. So, you know, maybe you want to use it that way. I don't know that you're going to actually learn anything from it. But anyway, here goes. And so let's use KiCad to put together the shifter. All right, so I am going to open up the schematic view, and this is the default size, and I'm just going to change it to the approximately the biggest size possible because there's going to be a lot of stuff in the shifter. I don't really expect people to, you know, watch this the whole way or even look at it at at one one x speed or even pay attention to this, so I guess I'm just going to mumble along and put stuff down and sort of describe what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and put down my uh, dual PCIe card edge. So we'll stick it, I don't know, down there. So these are all the signals that I've already defined. So we've got the destination bus here. This is the upper two bits, two bytes, and this is the lower two bytes. All the lower two bytes are on this side, and all the upper two bytes are on this side. Uh, we also have some non-connects. Uh, these are basically free uh, connections that I haven't assigned yet. So we've got uh, six over here and another seven over here. So that's a total of 13 undefined signals. 
Uh, I guess, you know, if I need to get more signals, I can just add another one of these PCIe cards, uh, PCIe slots. Okay, um, we've got the uh, boot signals. Uh, this is to load up the ALU. Uh, we have some F signals. These are actually the um, opcode. Are they the opcode or are they the function? Uh, these are the Funct3 from the option, from the instruction, uh, plus one extra bit. This is that uh, second to last bit, uh, bit 30, which tells us, uh, well, it tells the ALU whether it's going to do an add or a subtract, but for the shifter, it's going to say whether it's going to be a, uh, a shift right logical or shift right arithmetic. Uh, so we brought these out. So this is the ALU uh, output selector. Uh, we're, of course, going to need another signal here for the shifter specifically. So uh, what I can do is I can just define that signal right here. And we're just going to call it um, shift output enable. And I'm going to put a prime in there because Whenever I bring a signal out, I'm going to want to run it through a buffer so that uh, it's got minimal load on the bus. So let's see. The other thing that I need to do is, well, start shifting. Let's start shifting. So I'm going to bring in um, another thing, which is a 74. Is it this? Yeah, this is an LVC 541. And I kind of like this signal, this symbol over here. I don't really like the box with the uh, with the yellow background and you know just pin names in it. Um, this has the pin numbers and the pin names as well, but the symbol is um, this IEEE standard, and it basically does what it says on the tin. Um, so just a really quick primer on IEEE symbols. Um, there is a control block over here. That's what this little a uh, little indentation block over here means. It controls whatever's over here. And inside the control, you say what it does. So EN, that means it's an enable. Um, and you can see here that there is a block that becomes the quote enable signal. Uh, and you can see that it is G1 not and G2 not, and they're just anded together, and that becomes your enable. And you can see that in each individual slice over here, we have a Schmidt trigger symbol, which indicates that your inputs are Schmidt triggered. Um, you've also got the buffering signal, which means that you're going to have a high current output. And you've got the tri-state si signal, which of course is the enable. Uh, and that's pretty much that. So they've got, you know, other neat sing, uh, symbols. I don't particularly like the logic symbols because they're basically just blocks. Um, I kind of like to use the traditional signals, uh, symbols. Symbols. Okay, so um, first thing I'm going to do is copy this and flip it around on the x-axis. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can get the low bit aligned with the low bit. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a bus and call it RS10. And that's that. So now I'm just going to copy that. Oops. Copy that several times. Okay. And now I'm just going to rename these. Sometimes I wish that there were kind of spreadsheet functionality in here so that I could just sort of, you know, select all of these and they just become cells in a kind of a spreadsheet and then I could apply, you know, some sort of function to it. You know, or maybe something like Sublime Text has where you could, uh, you know, define a regex and then, well, there's a plugin that allows you to renumber and it would 
kind of be nice, but anyway. All right, so those are my 15 input signals. Now remember that for shifts, what we do is we take whatever's on source one bus and shift it by whatever is on source two bus, actually only the lower five bits because you're only ever going to be shifting between zero and 31. Um, and that and the output goes to the destination bus. So uh, none of these signals, these are for the registers. Um, yeah, so that's basically that. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take the lower seven bits here. And you always capture a tiny bit of the other stuff, which I don't need. I'm going to rotate around, flip around the y-axis and just move that in there. And then I'm going to take these, the upper byte, and rotate around the y-axis and put it there. Okay, so zoom out. That's basically what it looks like right now. And I'm just gonna move this out a little bit, maybe move it down slightly. And at this point, of course, um, because of the way that KiCad works, the moment you label a net, those the nets that are labeled the same become connected. So adding a bus is just sort of like a visual indicator. So I'm just going to do this and this, and that is a bus. Um, and that, again, that's just for, you know, aesthetics that when you're actually looking at the schematic, you can sort of see, oh yeah, this group of signals goes over there. Um, as opposed to, you know, just a bunch of disconnected chips that you have to sort of search around the schematic to figure out what connects to what. Okay, um, so this, um, I have basically created a buffer which does no shifting. And in a logarithmic shifter, you have to either shift by zero or shift by two to the n. So I'm gonna call this no shift. Okay. Uh, now what I need is a shift left and a shift right by one. So I'm going to copy this and move it down to here. Move it up a little bit. And get everything aligned. Okay, and we're gonna call this one, what? Shift left? No, shift right. Let's call it shift right. Because if I were to take this entire schematic and rotate it, let's see, counterclockwise, then this would be on the right. I don't know. All right, so for shifting right, um, that means that this bit now should be over here, and bit zero is supposed to fall off the end. So I'm just going to delete bit zero. Now I'm not going to copy it, I'm going to delete it. And now I'm just going to shift all of these right one and grab this. And of course, again, a little piece came off. So I'm just gonna move that back. And I'm gonna shift these down by one. And of course, even though we don't have it here, we don't really have it connected to the bus yet, not that it matters, this is going to be bit 16. All right, so the output over here is going to be the input shifted by one, right. Let's do shift left. Uh, and of course I can just connect these buses up because they're all basically the same. Don't need that. Okay, copy this. And nope, I don't want to copy that. I want to copy this because it has the bits in their original position. And just do that. Okay, and we're going to call this, oops, shift left. Okay, and in order to shift left, I basically shift everything up 
So bit 15 is actually going to be in a different buffer altogether. So I can remove that. And now I'll just move all of these up by one bit. Up one bit, up one bit. And of course, because this is risk five and we don't have your traditional carry goes into this thing, we're just going to ground this. So I typically use the ground ref signal uh, symbol, darn it. Um, there's also a ground symbol like this. There's also a digital ground signal in case you have both digital and analog grounds or power. Um, or let's see, you've got clean earth and protective earth. There's a chassis signal somewhere in here. That's kind of a chassis sig symbol. Uh, I typically use this because that's what I grew up with. So let's grab that. Also what I do is I make the value invisible because I know it's ground. So um, now the other thing is that this line, this net is called ground ref. Uh, if you wanted to rename it, you would have to put in another label and call it ground, which I in fact am going to do. The reason that I'm going to do that is that this symbol, when I created it, let me just save, uh, properties, edit with library editor, you can see down here a whole bunch of invisible pins that have no length and they're all called power input. If I edit one of them, you can see that it's called ground, GND. And up here, I've also put another bunch of invisible pins called VDD. And that's really important. Um, it's convenient to make them invisible so that you don't have to hook them up uh, explicitly. And uh, you also, when you make them invisible, you also want to make them zero length and stick them right on because otherwise, you know, if, if there's an invisible pin and the terminal is up here somewhere, if you run a wire across that, it will actually connect. So that's a uh, kind of a trap right there. Uh, and the way to, to connect up those invisible signals is you will take your ground ref. And first of all, we called it ground. So what I need to do is explicitly state that this net is also called ground. Finally, I need to take a power symbol called a power flag. And that says whatever power pins are called ground get connected to here. I don't know um, uh, because, because these pins don't actually have net labels on them. For example, this pin right here is not automatically the net NC11. I think that's what this power flag actually lets you do. So the other one was VDD. So what I can do now is um, take uh, VDD, okay? Now it says it's a positive voltage power flag symbol. If I were to just stick it down, I don't think it will actually connect to the net called VDD. And in fact, I can run the uh, DRC and, oh, we have to annotate things. So let's go ahead and just uh, run the annotation. That way when I run the DRC, it can actually refer to various chips. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of things whole bunch of problems. What I'm specifically looking for maybe is, um, here we go, pin 20 power input of component U3 is not driven. So if I look at that, um, we can see that it's actually pointing to an invisible pin. So if I go into the symbol here, uh, edit properties, edit with library editor, um, yeah, here it is. So we can see there's GND and VCC, not VDD. So I'm also going to need a v VCC. So let's just go ahead and VCC that. Hit OK. And we're also going to connect them because, you know, my VDD and VCC are exactly the same. Uh, let's go ahead and DRC again 
run, delete markers, run. Now you can see uh, pin 186 of component P1 is not driven. So that is the thing that I called VDD. So for whatever reason, VDD doesn't get connected until I attach a power flag to its net. Then when I rerun the DRC, we can see that that error has at least gone away. So anyway, that's the uh, magical incantation that I've learned about power flags. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and delete all the markers because I know they're not connected to anything. Okay. Um, and actually, I kind of wonder, um, were there markers on this side? Run? Close? No, there were no markers. So basically it's saying, yeah, um, these are connected, and it's pointing to all the pins that are not connected, which is very useful. So, oops, I don't need to annotate. I need to delete-tate. Okay. So we've got, um, this is, okay, this is uh, the lower 16 bits. Uh, obviously we're gonna duplicate it for the upper 16 bits. But what I first wanna do is hook up something to these enables. Okay, so uh, there are a few things that I can do. So one thing uh, that I want to do is, so we've got this shift uh, output enable. Um, so one thing that I could do is I could actually connect it up to, to one of these. And that basically means that uh, when an instruction comes to shift, all of these buffers are going to be enabled. Um, the other alternative is that since this is going to be a bunch of cascaded buffers that I could connect this signal to the very last buffers. Um, and I probably will end up doing that um, just because it will make my routing simpler so that I don't have to route this line to every single buffer. Um, and yes, it will mean that these buffers will actually be outputting and doing things, but eh, you know, I am not really power optimizing at this point. So let us go ahead and figure out what we want to do. So first, I'm just going to take this and ground it, because why not? So that way we've really, oops, we've really only got, okay, really I just wanted I'm going to have to delete it and do it again, maybe with a bigger wire. Oops. Great. Delete that junction. Great. Okay. Yes, that's what I wanted. Okay, so I can do that. I can do that. And that. And I've got another couple buffers up here. Okay, so now the thing that's going to tell us whether we're going to shift left, shift right, or no shift is first of all the amount of shifting that we need to do. Ah, maybe that's why I need the second uh, enable. Okay, so it's based on the amount of shifting that I need to do and whether I'm going to shift um, one, at least, or not, is based on RS2 zero. So let me bring that signal out. RS2 zero. I'm just going to leave it hanging for now. Okay. Uh, it's pretty clear that I'm going to need an inverter at some point. So let me go ahead and bring in an inverter. So that's going to be the 74LVC04. Um, I don't really like that symbol. So I'm going to take the 7404. I don't like that symbol either. So I'm going to go to the 74LS04. There are tons of symbols in here. Um, actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to use the 74LVC04. 
I'm just going to do that because I know that all the signals are going to feed into this one chip. Um, and I just may as well do that. Now, I, I guess when I designed this chip, um, I did not make these invisible. Let's do that exercise now. So I'm going to go to Properties, Edit with Library Editor. Okay. Now this is my own library. See, I have it called Elmarv, and I've got all my custom things in here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is edit and make this invisible, and also make the length zero, and then I'm going to move it down to the outline of the box and do the same here. Make sure that these are power inputs, I think, because otherwise power flag doesn't work. Uh, visible, invisible, and there. Now I just save it. By the way, I'm using KiCad 5. I'm using KiCad 5, release candidate 2. Um, KiCad 5 is vastly improved over KiCad 4. If you're still using KiCad 4, you might want to ditch it and just get the release candidate right now. Um, because they've been saying that, they've, that they're have that they very close to a release and they've been saying that for months, um, but I just can't wait. It's so awesome. Um, okay, so that's that. I've saved the library, closed that, and now we can see that we have no power symbol over here and the power sim signals are going to be connected up to here automatically. So the only disadvantage is that you have to know the name of the power signals. Um, it could be VCC, it could be VDD, it could be ground, it could be VSS, who knows. Okay, um, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed in RS20. Grab the wire, make it a little, oops, make it a little bigger. Move this over. And I know that I'm going to need all the rest as well. So... There's just going to be five of them. Okay, and on the other side, of course, I can have the negative of those. So for negative, I can either do tilde, which puts a bar over it, or I could do, you know, slash, putting a slash in there is another way of doing it, like that. Um, and for some reason, uh, my slash key isn't working. I wonder if it's because of this uh, key press. That's QI press. Anyway, um, RS, what did I say? Ah, cancel. All right, let's just put the tildes in there. And another thing that I've learned is that you won't, if you only want to put a bar over some of the sit, some of the letters, um, you can do that to put a bar only over the RS. So really tilde means bar on and bar off. Or I could put a, a not symbol in there. Okay, um, now the other thing is that first of all, um, whenever you have any unconnected input, make sure to connect it to a power rail. Uh, otherwise that input is going to float and is going to accept electromagnetic disturbances, which uh, may actually be bad for the chip. So always connect your unconnected inputs. Uh, you can leave your unconnected outputs unconnected, but remember to use the no connect symbol on that pin. So the other thing is, well, how do I know which signal goes where? Um, because, you know, on the chip, this is whatever it is. Um, and when I lay out the board, these signals may not easily be routed to these pins. Well, in that case, you just go back and forth between the PCB and the schematic, um, and you rearrange pins. Uh, you're never going to get it right the first time. All right, so um, if we're going to do a no shift, if we're not going to do any shift whatsoever, then RS20 has to be zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this up to RS20 not. 
And if I am going to shift, then of course I want to connect it up to RS20. Um, here, what I can do is move these out a bit. out a bit. Now some of you may be looking at this and saying why am I not using like why am I not using Eagle? Why am I not using Altium? Well the answer is that none of them are free. Well okay maybe Eagle is free. Oops. Maybe Eagle is free or at least one version of it is. Um, there is also um, Circuit Studio, which I think is free. But you know, I can't, I can't release the 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 files on GitHub, so I can't source code control them. Um, I can't share them. I can't let up any people modify the files or or you know clone it unless they use the right. Uh, unless they sign up for Circuit Studio. Um, you know, and KiCad does, you know, pretty much everything that I need to. Now, certainly Altium is going to have a lot more features, but Altium is a professional package. And, uh, you know, the moment you buy the professional package, A, you're locked into it, and B, well, you can't share your files anymore, and it no longer becomes open hardware. So that sucks. Anyway, all right, so those are my signals hooked up. So I'm going to have no shift if RS20 is zero, and I am going to have a shift if RS20 is one. Now, how do I choose between left shift and right shift? And the answer is, well, it's going to depend on one of these Fs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my little cheat sheet Okay, and uh, before anybody keeps screaming at me, I'm going to go ahead and fix my errors. Uh, the error is that uh, this is a negative input, so of course as a negative input, I want RS20, not, not RS20. So let's just do this, and we can connect this up to here, and this up to, uh, where is it, here, there we go, okay. So this signal has to be zero in order to enable this, and that means that I want RS20, which is zero for this, to just be connected directly there, okay. Uh, so that's, uh, that's that. Uh, now the other thing is I also need to hook up the uh, Fs. And if I pull out my handy little RISC-V notes here, we can see here's shift left and here's shift right, logical and arithmetic. Now, so uh, we can see that shift left is, uh, this is func3, so that's right over there. This is my f0, f1, and f2. f3 is this bit right over here. So um, we can see that um, f0 is going to be 1 for both of these. f1 is going to be 0 for both of these. But f2 is going to be 0 for left and 1 for right. So F2 is 0 for left and 1 for right, which means that I'm going to call this shift right. I'm just going to rename that signal. OK, and of course, I'm going to need to invert that as well. Well, lucky I have an extra inverter in this package. Shift right. And 
here. I'm just going to call this shift left. All right. So um, now the interesting thing, of course, <laughs> is that uh, these shift, these uh, buffers take negative inputs. So that would kind of mean that uh, shift right gets shift left, which is kind of um, confusing. So I'm just going to call this not shift right. And maybe I'll just call this not shift left. And again, that's probably confusing, but maybe it'll only be confusing once when you first encounter it and not on every buffer. OK, great. OK, so uh, shift right takes the not shift right. So I'm going to wire this up like this. OK, and that was the wrong one. Sometimes what also helps is if I just copy these uh, net names and put them down here. Hmm. So that when I'm just looking at a small part of the schematic, I know what it is. What's this? RS20. So that's this here. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's probably good enough. Okay, um, for no shift, of course, I don't need to pay attention to whether we're shifting left or shift right because, of course, it's a no shift. This, on the other hand, has to be the negative shift left. So. Um, I wonder if I can just uh, hook that up to a bus instead of having these wires all over the place. Well, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take shift left. And is there room for another wire in here? Yep. Yeah. Okay, shift left. Bring this all the way up to here and all the way up to here. All right. Copy the shift left symbol and move it here and I don't know, up there. Move this up here as well. As well. Okay. All righty. Um, so that's that. So these buffers are only going to be enabled when this signal is zero. So in other words, when RS20 is set and when not shift left is zero. In other words, when we're shifting left. And that is indeed what these buffers do. All right, so uh, that's the bottom two bytes. Uh, the upper two bytes are going to be the same. But what I'm going to do is I am now going to call this uh, 15. I'm not going to call it RS115, of course. I'm going to call it, um, let's see, S, yeah, S115. Okay, and this is S115, so these get changed to 14. And the reason that I'm doing this, of course, is that um, 
so this is the result of the shifter. Uh, so the result of shifting left, uh, of course, S1, 0 is going to be 0. S1, 1 is going to be S1, 0, and so on. So this is the result. Oops. This is the result of shifting by one. So I'm going to copy that because these are tri-state buffers. And the whole trick with this shifter is that only one set of buffers is going to be active at a time. And the one set is either shift right, no shift, or shift left. So each one of these S115s gets connected. And the only thing driving that, sim that signal is going to be whatever pair of shifters is activated. So that's that. Uh, there's another level now, shifting by two. So uh, how do we know that we're shifting by two? Well, that's going to be whether RS2 sub one is zero or one. So basically, it's going to be a copy of this. Not entirely a copy, but very close to it. Uh, let me turn on my crosshairs. Crosshairs are sometimes useful so that you can actually line things up. There we go. All right, so uh, now what I can do is I can also put a nice little label so this is shift by one. And maybe make that a little bigger. And this is going to be shift by two. So this is two to the zero. This is two to the one. So of course, this now is going to be one. One, one. The only disadvantage of uh, putting the net name throughout the entire wire is that if you change the net name, you have to change it all over the place. Otherwise, uh, KiCad will try to connect up those nets. Uh, not try, will. Let me line these up a little nicely. Uh, okay. Now, these, of course, are not the RS1s. These are now going to be the S1s. So uh, where's my no shift? Here's no shift. So I can just do this. Okay, that's my no shift. And of course, this is going to end up being S2. So the shift after shifting by two. Mm. It'd be so nice to have a tool that could do this for you. And I don't know enough about iCAD plugins to write one myself. Surely someone's going to write one. Okay. Um, I may as well make that change here too. instead of copied. I almost moved again. Right, there we go. Great. 
All right, so when we shift right, uh, the bits are gonna fall off the end. And specifically, we're shifting right by two, so I don't need this anymore. And I need to move this down. this move this back up grab these and this is now going to become 17 okay uh, no shift we're going to leave this the same and shift left we're going to shift all of these. So these were already shifted by one. So I can shift it just by one again. Just shift zeros in. Okay, uh, that is that. Now I can connect these signals up. So this is what is this RS two, uh, not one. Okay, uh, shift left and shift right. So shift left comes here. Actually, I'll put that down here. This wire, I'll connect there. Okay, so that's shift left. Uh, shift right is over here. And what I'm now missing is RS21, which can come down here. save. All right, so that's shift by two. Now, um, obviously, uh, the lower bytes are fairly simple because I'm either shifting zeros um, into the lowest significant bits or I'm just shifting the higher significant bits down. Uh, for the upper uh, bytes, uh, there is, of course, whether you're doing a si uh, an arithmetic shift or a logic shift. Uh, if it's a logical shift, you're just shifting zeros into the most significant bits. But if it's a uh, sign shift, then you're going to be shifting the most significant bit into the most significant bit. Um, so that's going to be a complication that we're going to deal with when we start adding the upper bytes. So let's go ahead and add the shift by four section. So we're just going to copy. Um, before I do that, let me go ahead and add a bus here so that we know that this bus is connected. And of course, I got this wrong. This is S1. These are all S1s. S1s, and these are S1s as well. Now you can see that uh, in shifting right, we haven't yet gotten to the point where we are going to get a most significant bit in here. So at this point, shifting right arithmetic is pretty much the same as shifting right logical.
Okay. Uh, let's add some bus thingalings. Two, three, four. Copy. Copy. Oops. Sometimes to move these uh, wires like one pixel or one grid coordinate over, you want to use the arrow keys and not the mouse keys. Because once you're in the vicinity, find control on your mouse is not that great. Okay, bus. Uh, let's see. How shall I do this? Well, first I'm just going to connect all of these up in a line. Again, this is just for visual aesthetics. And, uh, oh, well, I've already got a piece of a bus here. I may as well just do that sort of connection. So there. So if you're looking at this signal over here, you can just follow the bus down here and you can see, oh, it goes up into there. Okay, uh, shift by four. So let's go ahead and copy this section, move it out a bit because we're going to be dragging these wires along, which we don't need. Now we get to move it back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by grabbing this and just line it up with the top. And move it out. This is probably not evenly spaced out, but oh well. It's definitely not evenly spaced out. That's okay. Shift by four. All right, so we have these S2s here. So these are all going to be S2s, and these are all going to be S3s. Uh, what I can do is change this to S3 right away. Uh, actually, let's make it S4 so that we know that it's shift by four. Shift by four. Sometimes I just like to have, if I'm doing work like this, sometimes on the other screen, I like to play a YouTube video of somebody building something. Maybe they're putting together a schematic. Just to have it in the background, you know, just sort of like, yeah, I'm working and somebody else is working too, you know, instead of just listening to silence, which uh, some people can deal with. Um, I typically like to have uh, either music or, you know, some sort of background noise while I'm working. Um, the silence is not very important to me. I know that there are a lot of people out there who absolutely require silence in order to do their work. I am not one of those people. Yes, I thrive in an open office setting. Okay, um, S2. So in the no shift, of course, we are not going to be shifting at all. So we just get to call these S2 and be done with it. For shift right, um, first of all, let me just go ahead and change all of these to S2. So when we're shifting uh, by four, we're going to take S2, uh, zero, 
one, two, and three, and they're just going to fall off the end. So we start with four. So I'm just going to delete uh, these and delete these two manually because otherwise I'm going to pick this dude up. And I'm just going to move these down. And I just need to pick these up, move the little piece back. Move these down and copy two signals and name them properly. Properly. All right. So that is shift right by four. Now shift left by four. Uh, we pretty much do the same thing. These uh, upper two bits are going to fall off, or they're actually going to be um, going to the upper bytes. So I can delete these and move these up. And I should probably just rename these now before I forget. see we need two of these bits go up here uh, these two bits these four bits go up here and now we've got uh, grounds here and that's shift left by four so you can sort of see what's happening is, uh, you know, if we wanted to shift by seven, then we would shift by one, shift by two, and shift by four. So this ground would get shifted into the zero position. That's the zero position up here, and that would get shifted into the S22 position. The S22 position is up here and that would get shifted over here. Uh, is that a shift by seven? Okay, uh, no, this is actually correct um, because bit zero is supposed to go to bit seven on a seven bit shift. So here's bit zero, it goes to one, one goes to three, and three goes to seven. So bit zero does end up at seven. So, uh, let's see. Oh, I do need to change this to RS2 sub 2 so that we're shifting according to bit 2 now. So I'll change that here and change that he here. And then I need to hook it up. Okay, so shift left. We know it'll just get hooked up here and shift right. I think this is shift right. We'll just get hooked up there. And we have RS2 sub 2 not. That gets hooked up to here. And then we have RS2 sub 2. I guess I'll route down here up to there. Oops, up to there. Okay, that's RS2 sub 2. Uh, let me make this a bus. That should be fairly straightforward. I should just be able to copy this bus and just align it right there. And good, okay, save. All right, so that is shift by four. Uh, now we're going to shift by eight. So again, copy, move it off to the side, get rid of these dangly bits, and move it back. Oops, that's a little too far. All right, we'll move it around there. And now I will move it so that it is aligned. Great. All right, this is shift by eight.
8. All right, so once again, uh, we can change the output immediately. So this is now going to be S8. Eight, and this is also S8 shifted by 8. Oops. Shift 8. just remove these bottom ones and copy them from the top. Copy them here and copy them down here. All right. Okay. Uh, let's just go ahead and change these to S4 before we decide what the indexes are. That way everything is set up. And actually, uh, I know that these are all going to be grounded, so I am just going to, let's see, remove these things, move this over, and just draw a line here. Right? Because when you're shifting left by 8, all of these are going to be zeros. And these are actually just going to be uh, starting from 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, so that's shift left. Done. Uh, oh, and of course we will need to change this to RS3 because this is now bit 3. So let's go ahead and change those right away. Uh, oops, RS2 sub 3. Did I make that? Yeah. RS2 sub 3, RS2 sub 3, RS2 sub 3, and RS2 sub 3. All right, now for no shift, of course, we're just going to keep these. So these now become S4s. All These are also S4. Okay, that's no shift. Uh, just for fun, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this bus right now. just so that it looks a little nicer. Okay, um, it's funny how the uh, distance between the buffer stages gradually gets greater. Um, okay, shift right. Once again, we have some bits falling off the end. So this time it's going to be four more bits are falling off the end. So we start with uh, S8, right? Because these bits are now going to disappear. So we are just going to get these bits. So we'll start off with S8, um, and that's S4, 8, 9, 10, 11, let me do the fours first. Maybe I can do that a little more quickly if I do the same thing over and over. Oh, 
Oops. That's interesting. If I hit home. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. Four. 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 And four. Okay. Uh, so we have 8, 9, 10, and 11. We now go to 12 and 13, 14, 15. And these are 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, and 23. Okay, now, uh, before I continue, oh yeah, let me uh, just hook these wires up now. So this wire goes to there. This wire goes to here. Uh, let's see, we've got RS2 sub 3 inverted. It's uh, here, and then we've got RS2 sub 3 not inverted, and that gets hooked up there. Okay, so we've got these first four stages. Now, before I continue, I want to work on the upper bytes, and the reason that I want to do that is that the most significant bit, the sign bit, uh, from all the way in the source is going to start affecting what happens on the shift right. So, uh, what I'm going to do is copy this, let's see, up to about here. Set that off to the side, clean up the dangly bits, and it looks like I lost the bottom of my box here. Okay, and looks like I got a piece of the bus here too. Don't need that. Okay, so let's go ahead and line this up up here. I think that looks lined up. Yep, okay. Um, and the control lines are all going to be the same as well. So I'm just going to hook those up right away. And what's this? This one goes down to here. And this control line goes down to here. Okay. Now, let's talk about the no shift. That's easy enough. So we're starting at now 16, because we're on the upper two bytes. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and up to here. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. Okay. Um, now I can take these and go down to where they come in. Rotate that, or rather reflect it. Okay, and this other byte, oops, this byte here. Reflect, and bring it down here. And I can just hook that up with a bus, bus from here up to, let's see, where did it go with the other one? The other one I hooked up 
Well, it doesn't really matter. I can just hook up the entire thing. That's the entire Source 1 bus. All right, great. Okay, uh, shift right. Uh, shift left is actually going to be easy because all I need to do is change these. So I'm just going to delete these and these and copy these, except shifted by one. So the most significant bit is just going to fall off the end. So that goes away. And these go up here. And there. OK, well, that's shift left. All right, now we need to deal with shift right. And here we're going to have a slight complication. So let me go ahead, first of all, and start with bit 17, because remember bit 16 is down uh, uh, here. There's bit 16. So we start with 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, oops, 22, 24, okay, 25, 26, 7, 8, 29, and now here's 30 and here's 31. But of course now the question is what is this? So this can either be 31, or it can either be a source sub 31, or it could just be zero if it's a logical shift right. So let me delete that and delete that from the bus because now this is going to be a function of RS131 and uh, one of these Fs. Um, it's going to be uh, F3 right, because that we said was the bit that determines whether we're doing an arithmetic shift. So um, I'm going to call this arith, or maybe I should just you know call it shift arithmetic, okay? So that's F3. So if that's a 1, that means I'm going to shift arithmetically. So if it's a 1, that means that uh, where's my shift right? That means that this is whatever RS1 sub 31 is. So I'm going to need an AND gate, uh, which is a 74 LS. Is it an 08? Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to do that and that and this and this. And I'm going to copy this over to here. And let me maybe make this a little bigger. Move that. And this is Shift Arith. There, now they're lined up. OK, so uh, the way this is going to work is if arithmetic shift is set, then the output here is whatever RS131 is. If shift arithmetic is not set, then this is going to be a zero, and we're shifting a zero in. And that's all there is to it, at least for that section. So let us go ahead and do this. 30. Twenty-eight, 
three, and 16 and now I can just delete these and replicate copy paste copy paste all right and since I've been welding these buses together. I may as well just weld that bus. So this is the entire S1 bus. Okay. So that was fun. Uh, let's go ahead and do the next shift stage, which is shift by two. So I copy this piece. And I move it off to the side and remove all the dangling bits. And copy this so that it lines up. Let's line it up on the top. And it needs to move a little bit over. stub. Actually, I don't even need that stub because the buses are going to be welded together right over here. Weld. And these control lines also get connected. All right, so um, as before, uh, shift left and no shift are pretty easy. So let's just go ahead and renumber these. I wonder if I can just delete these and copy these in. Let's try it. No, they're a little too small. That's okay. Uh, so first of all, I can grab these and go one, two, one, two, and that should make them small enough. And I should probably rotate these and stick them back here. Okay, that's sort of okay. I think that's less work. I'm pretty sure that's less work. One, two, three, four. Reflect and copy them back in. Great. Okay, uh, shift left. So I can just go ahead and remove these and remove these and replace them with, let's see. So we're starting with 16. So we need, um, hang on a minute. If this is shift left, then isn't RS115 coming up here? I think so. We're certainly not gonna shift a zero in the middle of a byte. That wouldn't make any sense. So this one here is 15. And yes, I know that I got a little dangly bit, but I think they'll they'll just merge in he, in here. Okay, uh, so shift left, that should be a 15. That means that the next shift left is probably gonna be 14. 14, yeah. 
Okay. Um, that means that on these shifts, I will also not have these, and I will have some bus entries. Okay. So uh, in the shift left on the lower bytes, I ended with 13, so I need to start with 14 here. Unfortunately, I do not have 14, but that's okay. I'm just going to grab these and put them in the right place, and then copy these two and start with 14. 14 and 15. These go up here and starting with 24 here, we'll go up to 29 and that is shift left. Okay, all of these S2s are now going to be different. So let's just go ahead and delete this and copy from here and replace with S2. And here is S2 also. Okay, uh, these go away. And get replaced with these. All right, so that was no shift and that was left shift. Now we need to deal with right shift, shift right. And with shift right, we're shifting by two. So this should now be, let's see, S116. So this should now be S118, 18. 19, 20, oh wait, why don't I just delete these and copy. So we're at 16, so this needs to be 18 if we're gonna shift it by two. So we'll start here. Okay, and now we need to go to 22. Let's go find 22. Copy all of this. Okay, now, again, these are gonna be different. Whoops, uh, redo. Wanted to delete those. Okay, so these are going to be different, right? Because we're taking S131 and we're going to shift it down into this position. And we're also going to take S131 and shift it into this position if it's an arithmetic shift. If it's a logical shift, these are going to get filled with zeros. But that's just what this is, right? This is the sign bit or zero. So I'm just going to take this and put it here. And that's all there is to it. Right? Because this is this is either the sign bit if it's arithmetic or it's zero if it's logical. So that's what we're going to put over here. And that's shift right for the second one. Weld the 
buses together. And that's that. All right. Next, we're going to need to shift by four. Now, I'm aware that we still need to shift by 16 over here. So I'm just filling up this section now. Get rid of the danglies. Um, the problem with danglies is that if they happen to be long and they happen to intersect another wire, uh, KiCad will join those wires. So in this case, I was lucky that that wire didn't actually join up to anything. Okay, so we first, we're first going to align up the tops. Okay, then we're going to align the bottom here. Okay, and let's see, merge these control lines. Again, technically, I don't have to really draw these lines all the way down because their net labels are the same. But still. Okay. Great. So, uh, once again, we start with no shift. So these just become these. So like before, I'm just going to delete these and copy these over and shorten them up and flip them around and put them back. Great. Okay, and these now become, um, delete those, copy these in, and change these to S4. <sighs> hitting the wrong button for edit. I'm hitting four instead of E. Four, 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 four. Here, four, 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 and four, 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 and four. Okay. Uh, one thing that I didn't do is um, uh, this line here: shift left, shift arif, um, and let's see, shift left. Yeah. Shift left, shift arith, and uh, these, let's see. Um, RS20, those guys, uh, shift OE. Uh, let's see, I do need to bring these out, which I forgot to do. This is two, three, and four. So these signals, I still need to run through a buffer. Um, I have five signals here and three signals here. That's eight signals total. That'll fit nicely into a single one of these buffers. So really, these are prime, prime and then they would go down to here after the buffer. So, And again, that's just to provide isolation so that um, a signal on one 
card in one slot isn't driving a whole bunch of signals. The, the most they'd ever be driving is uh, one buffer on each slot. And the other advantage is that the, buffer, the buffers are very close to the card edge, which means that the line uh, connecting the two is very small, so you're not going to get a whole lot of reflections. All right, so where are we? We're here. The no shift uh, I just took care of. So the easy one is the shift left. So let's get rid of these grounds, which we know we're going to not need. All right, uh, let's see. Since we are shifting left, this is now gonna be 16 up here, and this is 17, 18, and 19. And that means, of course, that these come from the lower bytes. So this is 15, this is 14, this is 13, and this is 12, which means that the next bit is going to be 11 on the shift left. So there's bit 11 on the shift left. Okay, and likewise, this is going to be now 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. That's shift left taken care of. Now let's take care of shift right. And once again, um, we're going to be shifting by four, which means that 16, 17, 18, and 19 uh, go down into the lower bytes. So we're going to start with 20 here. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and now we're going to need another four bits, 28, 29, 30, and 31, and these are the sign bits coming from here. Okay. Um, I did something wrong over here. Obviously, I left this enormous hole um, because I counted incorrectly. So these bits come down here. Uh, these two bits come down here, and now I need 28 through 31. Let's go grab that from here. Okay, that's correct. All right. Shift by eight. Let's make a copy. Oh wait, um, weld the buses together. Join them up. Okay, it looks like I need to fix these up. So, delete these. And copy it here. Delete these and copy that. All right, shift by eight. Copy. Move this over. Get rid of these danglers. Put this in approximately the right place. Align it. And align that. Great. 
eight. Connect up the control lines. Connect up the buses. There's no bus there. I'll go ahead and add the bus. Okay. All right, once again, no shift is easy. We just change these. Uh, oh. Interesting. I must have done a move instead of a copy. There. Okay, so we delete these and copy these, making them shorter and flipping them and moving them back. All right. And this is going to be 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, Shift, that's no shift taken care of. Uh, this obviously goes away. And let's see, we're shifting left, which means that, let's just delete those, which means that the eight bits at the top are just gonna fall off the end, and we're just gonna be left with these. Okay. And we're also going to need S for uh, 15 down to 8. Let's go find that. 15 down to 8. Okay, so that means that for the shift left, the next bit down here should be a 7. Let's make sure that that's correct. Yes. All right, and now we just have shift right. So we know that for shift right by eight, all of these are going to be replaced by this sign signal. So let's go ahead and draw that out. Uh, let's see, let's just do some copies and then draw one wire right down to there, okay. And these are now going to start from 31. So 31, 30. Actually, I can just copy them, can't I? S4, 31, like from here. Okay, and that means that for shift right, the next bit down here should be 23. 
Let's double check that. Indeed it is, great. All right, that is shift by eight. All right, so let's do shift by 16. Okay, so. Okay, so uh, we've got the last section to go. Let's go ahead and copy all of this and move it over and remove the danglers. And copy this over to here. Okay. Guess I'm waiting for KiCad to figure out how to do that. And this is why you save very often in KiCad because you never know if it's just going to sort of give up. That obviously did not work. Uh, apparently what happened is a mouse move was in the queue somewhere. And, okay, so here we go again. Let's just line this up, all right. Paste it in there, and done. Okay, great. All right, so the first thing I need to do is change these control lines to four. And the control line up here to four. And this control line to four. And these control lines to four. this control line to four, and this one to four. And that means that I can now connect them up here. Let's change this label, shift by 16. And we can connect these two down to here, and this one over to there. That's shift left and shift right. And now we've got RS2 sub 4, which comes from here. And we've got RS2 sub 4, which comes from here. Right, that's that connected. Okay, we also have this small bit of bus, which needs to be connected. Well, not strictly, it doesn't, but okay. All right, let's take care of no shift. So, first of all, these need to become S8. And so I will copy those from here. Yeah, from here. Shorten and flip, flip and copy in. Okay, that's no shift. And now the outputs here are actually going to go where? So the thing that I'm thinking about is that we've still got this last signal over here, shift output enable. Now, if I connected this directly to the destination, then one of these control lines, one of these enable lines would have to be connected to that uh, shift out. But 
the problem is that we've got this shift left and this RS2 sub four lines taking up the enable lines. So I could either add a whole nother row of buffers, well not another row, just another uh, four buffers for the 32 bits, or what I could do is I could modify the shift left and the shift right control lines to also disable all of the buffers when this is disabled. So I think that that is what I'm going to do. So here's shift right. So let me move that over a little bit. And I'm going to put a junction here so that I can just delete this segment. Okay, and here is shift left. I'm also going to put a junction here and delete that segment. Now, what I want is for these to go to one if shift output enable is one. And of course I want it to go to one if the inputs are one. Well, that's an OR gate. So let's go and grab two OR gates. So that's going to be a 74 LS 32. Nope. That wasn't it. 74 LS 32, this one. Okay, copy those. Maybe move these down. Okay, and this is actually going to be unit B. So what is it? Properties unit B. Okay. So let's move this over a little bit. Now this is our actual shift left and shift right control lines. I guess I should move this over a little bit. Okay. Now this is a shift left um, this is actually before the enable and this is after the enable. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this signal here and I'm going to put it here, except this is going to be after it gets buffered. Okay, now this shift left is going to come from this shift left, except that this shift left, even though it's after it's buffered, it's also before uh, this um, modification of the signal. So I'm just going to call this, uh, what should I call this? Shift left, um, I can call it shift left prime. Um, shift left, um, I don't know, shift left A, whatever. And this is going to be shift right A. And the reason that I want to give it uh, a name, the reason that I want to give the net a name is so that when I go to the printed circuit board, this doesn't just have some anonymous net number so that it actually has a label so I know exactly what it does. Okay, so does this do what I think it does? Well, when shift left, let's suppose shift output enable is one, which means we're not enabling the shift, right? Because this is active low. So if this is one, then these are output to one, and that means that we're neither shifting right nor shifting left. That does mean that we're shifting uh, no shift, but I'm gonna take the shift output enable signal and also apply it to the no shift control lines. So that means that I'm going to take this and make this shift OE. And the same thing down here, shift OE. 
And the same thing for the upper two bytes. Okay, so that's what happens if shift OE is one. Now, if shift OE uh, is zero, that means that we are actually outputting a shift. And if shift left A, if this signal is one, then that means that this signal is one, so we're not shifting left. And that means that this signal is zero, which means that zero or zero is zero, so we are shifting right. And that is the way that we will enable these output buffers or disable these output buffers. Okay, great. So let's see where we were. Um, this is no shift. Okay, so now we can connect these directly to the destination lines. So this now becomes RD. Great. All right, so that's the no shift, and let's do the no shift for the upper two bytes as well. This is no shift, outputs directly to RD. That's the no shift taken care of. Let's take care of shift left. Well, with shift left, if we're shifting left by 16, that means that all of these lines are grounded. So I will just copy this over to here, and we are done. Uh, let's go to the upper bytes. Okay. So with the upper bytes, uh, that's no shift. With the upper bytes for shift left, um, obviously we're going to want these to be what? Well, S8 16 through 31 fall off the end, which means that this starts with S8 0. S8 0. And I believe I can copy that from somewhere. Yeah, I can copy that from here. Shorten, flip, delete these, and stick these back in. Okay, uh, it appears as though we lost some lines. All right. Great. All right, and now we can delete this and replace it with these. And that's shift left taken care of. So the only other thing to take care of is shift right. Now, again, with shift right, because we're shifting by 16, the sign bit is going to be right in all the bits. So we're just going to copy these over. There's the sign bit. Comes all the way here. Okay. And uh, it occurs to me that I didn't actually name this signal, so I should give it a name. I will call it 
sign. And of course, it's not really a sign. It's more like the MSB. So let me just call it MSB. Okay. So that's shift right on the top. For shift right on the bottom, all we're going to be doing is, let's see, we're shifting by 16, which means all of these bits are going to fall off the end, and we get S832 down to 16. So we can remove this. We'll go find S831, I meant, down to 16. So that's right here. Okay. Okay, and I lost my bus entries, so let me go get some. Here's some. Okay, great. And then I can delete these and replace them with RD. Okay, so that's shift right. That should be all of it taken care of. So there's no shift, shift left, shift right. Oh, we do have this to replace. Okay, there's no shift. There's shift left. And I believe that should be that. Okay. So this is the logic. So we have, in total, uh, 12 buffers for each of these columns, and we have five columns. So that's 60 buffers. That's not too bad. Um, it's, it's not great, but you know, it's, uh, it's what we can do. Now, I could have used 16-bit uh, buffers. Um, I think that's the 1-6 what is it, 245 or something like that. Um, it's a chunkier chip, and I think it may be actually more expensive than just two of these, and these are fine. Um, you know, they're, they're, if, I, if I replace this with a single chip, the chip will be wider, uh, so this way I get sort of narrower columns. Um, I don't know if, that's, if I'm rationalizing or not. Um, let's see, we've got one AND gate, we've got two OR gates, we've got one hex inverter, um, and that is it. Oh, yes, uh, a buffer. We need an extra buffer. So let me copy this buffer. Um, why not just stick it right over here? Yeah, let's put it over there. And to give me some room, I'm going to move everything over. And now KiCad is going to get a heart attack because I'm moving everything over. All right. All right. Great. Now, uh, let's see. Um, there was a shift arith line. So this one is actually prime. This one is also uh, prime. You know what? Uh, I am going to call this shift left. And I'm going to call this one shift left. Oh no, because then I have to change it all over the place. I'll just keep that, this at shift left A. Okay, so I'm just going to call the shift left prime, shift arith prime. Uh, these are also going to become prime, 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 and prime. 
Okay, shift O E prime. Uh, I'm going to need that to come in here. Shift O E prime. And it comes out as just plain old shift O E. And I'm also going to need a shift arith. And that's going to come down here. And this is going to become plain old shift arith buffered. All right. Um, going to need another few lines. And well, actually, we're just going to need these. So these come in over here. All right, and then we have shift left prime, which comes from here, goes down to here. Let's make that a bus. a little control line bus. Okay. I can also make this a bus, except rotate that. Rotate. and make that a bus. Uh, hmm. Okay. Bus. Bus. And bus. Okay. Now, what are we going to enable this with? Well, shift output enable. Um, of course, this one. <laughs> So uh, let's see, what I'm going to want to do is pull this back a bit. Why does it do that? It's like it's not really connected, but it, I know it was. Okay. And now we just take the shift output enable line and put it to the buffer. So it basically buffers itself and also the rest of the control lines. All right, there's that shift OE signal, uh, which I can just take from here and bring it down to there if I wanted to. Okay, um, let's see. I don't think I'm going to take that line and bring it all the way up to these other shift OE lines. Um, nor am I going to take the shift arith and bring it up to all the way up here. Uh, there is this RS131, um, which is um, it's not buffered. But I think it'll be okay because it really is one load. And I guess a buffer would be one load anyway. I just need to remember to keep this close to the slot itself so that uh, this line doesn't sort of go all over the place. Um, there may actually be another issue, which is that all of these source lines they travel basically to three buffers and they may in fact go a long way. If they do go a long way, then I'm going to have to add buffers for those 32 input lines as well.
So, all right, well, the next thing that I need to do is add capacitors, local capacitors. These are basically um, charge uh, reservoirs for each of these chips because whenever they switch, they use a lot of current. And that current has to come from somewhere. And if it just comes from a wire that goes to power, well, you're gonna get a power drop. So that's why we need some capacitors. Now, rather than put the capacitors next to each symbol, I am just going to, uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is annotate everything so that all the chips get a reference designator. So um, how many chips are there in total? Well, it looks like 64. Um, so the annotator goes first in the y direction and then in the x direction. So this would be the last chip to be annotated. So that's 64 chips. So I'm gonna need 64 little capacitors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a little capacitor and I'm gonna give it a value. So it's gonna be 100 nanos. And I'm going to replicate it, uh, say, eight times. That looks good. Connect the tops, connect the bottoms. Go grab a ground signal. Where's my ground signal? Here's one. Um, I'm just gonna copy this whole thing so that I have all the signals. All right, copy this and put it somewhere in the middle. And let's just copy one of the power signals and put it there. Now I can get rid of that. Okay. Now I have um, these eight capacitors, and now I'm just going to duplicate that eight times for 64. So now the nice thing about doing it this way is that all the uh, decoupling capacitors are off to the side because they're not important to understanding the circuit. And Also, they each get their own number. So when I annotate them, annotate, we have C1 through C64, and that tells us which capacitor goes to which chip. Yes, they're all the same, and I could put them anywhere I want, but this sort of lets me keep track of which chip uh, got a capacitor placed next to it and which didn't. So that's that. Um, the other thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to add a bigger capacitor, maybe even three of them. The reason is that this is going to be one, you know, big card. And we have all the little capacitors, but if there's not enough charge or, yeah, if there's not enough charge in the capacitor, well, the chip is going to need to pull it through the capacitor and down to the, the power lines that are coming from the slot. Well, I'd rather them meet a larger uh, charge, um, supply of charge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another capacitor, except this time it's going to be a polarized capacitor. And I'm just gonna put three of them down. And I'm gonna give them a value, value, oops, a value. Uh, let's call it um, 10 micros is fine. Um, I have a bunch of 47 micros. Uh, let's just call it, it doesn't actually matter. They're all gonna be roughly the same size, just different heights. So value, 10 micros, value, 10 micros. And I'll use, you know, that's just a minimum. So we'll ground the negative end, positive end at power. And I kind of like to start these off at uh, 100. Luckily, I don't have 100 chips. U 100, 
you 100, and that's my three, uh, three large electrolytic capacitors. Okay, the next thing that I like to do is um, just run an electrical rules check to make sure nothing crazy happened. All right, multiple item. Yeah, I did do that, didn't I? This is uh, U101, and this is U102. Great. Run a DRC check, and okay, we've still got some problems here. Ah, yes, uh, P1, that's our slot connector. Um, we've got a whole bunch of no connects. So what I need to do is uh, delete the markers and put some no connects. Now the hotkey for no connect is Q, and that was the wrong place, which slows me down quite a bit. So I'll stick uh, maybe eight down. Okay, now I'll copy it, being careful just to hit the ends of the X's. because otherwise I bring the slot along with me and that's no fun for anyone. I need five X's here. Okay, I need a whole bunch of X's here. So I'll just grab a bunch and stick them over here. And I've got uh, four more here and five more here. Okay, four over here, three here, and what's that, six? Okay, six here, oops, got a no connect in there. All right, uh, we've got five here. Okay, and uh, all of these are no connects. All right, save it and run DRC again, and we're done. No errors, except of course we don't actually know if this is going to work or not. It looks like it's going to work. Okay, so uh, the next step here would be to create the printed circuit board. So, but this video has gone on long enough. Um, you can go see part two when that comes up. Um, but uh, that is going to basically require um, creating the PCB, placing all the chips. Once I place all the chips, uh, then I'm going to have to go back to the schematic. And usually what I do is I put the chips on both sides of the board because otherwise the board just gets huge. Um, and once I put a, a chip on the other side of the board, that flips all of its pins around, which means that uh, this is no longer the optimal arrangement of pins. So that means that I would have to flip this symbol around. So basically, I'm just going to go back and forth between the PCB and the schematic, changing things around until things line up properly. So until next time, um, I hope you enjoyed that. And hopefully you just listened to that background to me in the background and you didn't just listen to me blather on for a couple hours. Um, so until next time, see ya.